Welcome to a collection of Stuart engines and some other nice things. This is part 4, making a new crankshaft for the factory machine kit of a grasshopper beam engine. The need for this is totally due to bad assembly and not the Stuart model's kit in any way. The flywheel for this engine is not in good condition because at some time in its life the hole in the centre of it has been enlarged and obviously because the hole in the flywheel was bigger than the crankshaft, it was a rattle fit. A while back I bought a collection of engines very similar to this, factory machine kits, assembled by someone. And all of these kits had similar problems, the holes in the parts had been enlarged. In this video I will be making a new crankshaft for the engine, and the material I'm going to use is silver steel. This is different in many ways to mild steel, but the main thing about it is, it wears very well and it's accurately ground to the size that you need it to be. With this particular crankshaft, with the crank web in place, the hole isn't drilled all the way through and it looks like the peg or maybe the drill is broken off in the hole. Because of this I need to proceed with caution. First of all I'm using a centre drill to make sure that the hole that I'm going to drill in the crankshaft is exactly in the middle. I don't recommend just putting the part in the drilling machine, a lathe is very useful for this. I don't recommend using brute force on this part because the crank web is a cast iron casting. Once I'd centre drilled the part, I'm using a twist drill which is one imperial size down below the 3 8 of an inch that the hole in the crank web currently is. The good news is it isn't a twist drill that's broken off in the hole. Whatever it was, it knocked the twist drill slightly off centre, but thankfully the drill I selected didn't touch the crank web. Now it looks a bit of a mess, the hole isn't very neat at all, but it really doesn't matter. Because here, with the part lightly clamped in my vise, I'm knocking out the old crankshaft using a centre punch. In this clip you can see how little metal was left of the crankshaft, so it was very easy to tap it out of the crank web. And this is what I poked out of the hole in the crank web. It's just a piece of steel. And I'm really pleased about this because had it have been a piece of broken drill bit, I would have had to use an entirely different technique. This is a very straightforward and simple job. And the next part of it is reducing the end of this piece of bar from 7 16ths of an inch down to 3 8 of an inch to accept the crank web. If you have a collet set, I really would recommend using collets when making things like this. The concentricity is quite important. Luckily, this recently adjusted Myford and its chuck seems to be quite accurate. It's a Myford ML7R with the same type of headstock as the Super 7, with quite a substantial taper cone bearing at the front. I need to turn down the piece of bar so that the crank web fits on the end of it with a tiny little bit protruding this is optional. It just seems to be the way it's done on full-size steam engines and locomotives. I've just noticed that for this operation I seem to have picked the bluntest of my carbide tip tools. The finish is not too bad and to be honest I'm not bothered about the finish for the part that is going inside the crank web. You can tell by the sound of the tool against the metal that it's not very sharp. And this is really shown up by the silver steel which is quite a hard material. Once I turned the part almost to the finished diameter, I used a file to clean up the front edge and the edge on top of the crankshaft part. Time now to use the micrometer to see how close to 3 8 of an inch the diameter is. Another longitudinal cut and another check with the micrometer, it's very close now. As I've mentioned thousands of times, I'm not an engineer, so I don't have a problem using wet or dry sandpaper for what is in effect the final cut. I'd like to talk about something called an interference fit. If you have a shaft that is exactly 3 8 of an inch in diameter and a hole in a piece of metal that is also exactly 3 8 of an inch in diameter, this is an interference fit. And if there's an interference fit on both of the components, you can just press them together, but I don't like to do that. In my initial years of model engineering, I made a simplex and I managed to crack two of the wheels by pressing them onto the axles. I do like to use Loctite 603, which is a retainer designed for holding bearings in place. 
and it's also quite good for holding wheels to axles. You do need to pin them as well. Once I'd coated the end of the crankshaft in Loctite 603 and pressed the crank web in place using the tailstock chuck, I took the part over to the drilling machine and through the existing hole in the crank web I drilled another hole and the diameter of this hole is exactly the same as the unthreaded part of the shank of a small bolt and I fitted the bolt into the hole using Loctite 603. Normally I would drill all the way through and fit a taper pin but I'm doing it this way for a change and I'm sure it will be okay. If it comes loose I will eat my words. And that my friends is the end of this episode and now have a new crankshaft that's much better than the old one. And in the next episode I'll be working on the flywheel that fits on this crankshaft. Stay safe, stay healthy, thanks for watching and I hope you found it useful. Please take the time to visit my Mainsteam Models website and click on the section of the website that says Video Playlists. And by doing that you can find other videos that you may like to watch. And by using the playlists you can actually watch the videos back to back.